informant who is very knitted to Raab states that Sunak has not had a word with Dominic after he received the bullying report. Dominic Raab's prospects in politics is very bleak as a matter of fact due to his negative relative office history. It has been alleged that Rishi has been ducking the ultimate resolution firing after the investigation into the Raab's bullying officers. Mr. Raab has familiarized himself with the, the report furnished to Downing Street on Thursday morning and retains that he has not maltreated co-workers or breached the parliamentary and ministerial code. Dominic Raab reiterated that he has not had any prior or secret meetings with Rishi and vehemently rejected the assertion that they had discussed his future moving forward. Number 10 had given assurance that senior lawyer Adam Tully Casey's report and the Prime Minister's finding on the eight official accusations would be available for the public consumption and for the Ministry to finalise decisions on what to do, swiftly. But after Mr Sunak exhausted the day with the details of the current outcomes of the report and it appeared no declaration would be aired before Friday. Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner said, and I quote, while the Prime Minister dithers and delays, trying to summon up the guts to sack his own deputy, working people are battling the worst cost-of-living crisis for a generation, food bills and mortgage rates are rising, wages are stagnating, and too many of us are waiting months and even years for health treatment. While the Tories are yet again mired in chaos, Labour is focused on cutting the cost of living, cutting crime and cutting waiting lists with our long-term plan to give Britain its future back. Dominic Raab has reportedly thrown in the towel of resignation from his deputy prime ministerial position over claims of bullying. This is seriously still under investigation. Dominic Raab has vowed to quit if ever he is proven guilty by the evidence against him and he said, and I quote, is important to keep my word. The complete account has just been made available for public view and up for perusal. Raab, who has once held the position of a justice secretary, declared that he has only two allegations against him as the investigation has rejected all the counts against him. Raab was not happy with the accusation as he described as a defective outcome which I quote, dangerous precedent for the conduct of good government. PM Rishi who acknowledged receipt of the said Raab's resignation, recognized and accepted it and said is I quote, with great sadness. Labour leader Keir Starmer blames Rishi Sunak of failings, saying the first and foremost thing he should have done was to fire Raab before any process begins. The numerous grievances mitted out by various civil servants were investigated and scrutinised by senior lawyer Adam Turley Casey. On top of the political fallout, Dominic Raab now faces a pay cut of about £68,000 as he loses his ministerial salary. Despite resigning he will still get a £17,000 payoff, if he is not reappointed to another ministerial office within the next three weeks of leaving office. Not out of the realms of likelihood given that the BBC understands Rishi Sunak was not calling for Raab's resignation. But the bottom line is you've got to be able to have direct conversations with people. In Dominic Raab's Surrey constituency, divided reaction. I suspect that the civil service is oversensitive about bullying, something that... Um... In my day, we weren't uh, particularly worried about. I'm very sorry it was necessary. I think he probably demanded an efficiency and a rigour, and I think this whole bullying concept has got way out of control. And by his general nature that he comes over, obviously I'm not involved, but it's general nature, I think it's probably true. So, uh, you know, shouldn't because he's in power, shouldn't get away with any type of bullying. Should be example, really, shouldn't he? The complainants against Dominic Raab wanted him removed for what they saw as persistent bad behaviour. But he's now talking about a small group of them having ambushed him. Whitehall may find Dominic Raab's even more abrasive out of office. And here he is. Gary, that is. Gary. We're used to people resigning from office and going off with a tail between their legs, disappearing from public view, the rest of it and being labelled a failure. What Dominic Raab has made sure today is that certainly in a lot of people's uh, minds, he's now labelled some kind of martyr for a cause, the anti-woke cause. And he was very determined to do this. He was asking Adam Tolley if he could have a whole section of the report that gave his version of events. Actually, he did better than that. Mm. He got a pause from number 10, during which there was no report. He could dominate the landscape with his version of events before the report was even out. A favour from Rishi Sunak, you can't help thinking. 
there are civil servants here who also uh, feel around Whitehall that Adam Tully and the way he wrote this report, the way he conducted it, uh, that's also helped uh, Dominic Raab a bit in this cause because a lot of behaviours which they considered uh, mm. repugnant uh, aren't even listed here because they didn't re meet the threshold which that employment uh, barrister feels is necessary for any sort of uh, public uh, report like this. And uh, some of them, as uh, Adam Tolley says in the report, had never even met Dominic Raab, some of the uh, people who wrote in to him. Now, that's another gift for the opponents, but some of those people were de devising rosters. They were, they were involved in the department, departments which in some cases became mildly dysfunctional because everyone was trying to dance around mm. this man uh, that an awful lot of people found it appalling to work with. So, what are the uh, questions that are left here tonight? One of them is, uh, is it, uh, is it really necessary to behave that like that to uh, civil servants if you want to drive for results? Well, other mm. uh, ministers seem to cope without doing that. Are prime ministers in the future going to behave differently when they get a warning? There were warnings uh, mm. about Dominic Raab's behaviour, just as there were about the other two uh, resignations from the cabinet uh, un under uh, uh, Rishi Sunak. One thing we do know the answer to tonight, though, is who's coming in, who's benefiting from all of this. Oliver Dowden uh, and Alex Chalk, the new Justice Minister, Oliver Dowden, the new Deputy Prime Minister, both of them Remainers, I should mention mm. to you. And if any Tory comes up to you and says, oh, we don't keep count of things like that anymore, ignore them. <laughs> OK, we might find out. Gary Gibbon, thank you very much indeed. Well, joining me now from his North East Somerset constituency is the former business secretary, Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the programme. I just want to put to you the quotes from the Adam Tolley report in the conclusion. Dominic Raab's behaviour was intimidating, humiliating, unreasonably and persistently aggressive. This is the conclusion to a report yeah. that was you know, summoned up by the government for the government.